Hey there, everyone. It's Wednesday Wisdom again. And you're here with Elizabeth Eleanor from Women of Light. And we've got the beautiful Bridget here. That uh, Brockle Bank. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to say that correctly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's, uh, so we're actually, are you in Sydney as well, Bridget? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, excellent. Eastern suburbs. Ah, beautiful. So um, we're here today to talk about, um, you know, something that is uh, a big topic because it's, we talk about a lot in society, but, you know, it's still got a stigma around it, isn't it? And it's mental health. It's such a, it's such a big topic and yet we've still got um, challenges around it. We were just having a bit of a conversation before we got on. Um, and, you know, some of the stuff that Bridget was just telling me was amazing. So, um, so sorry, Bridget, <laughs> just, we, yeah, we were okay the whole time and then the, the <laughs> totally fine, totally fine. So Bridget, um, tell us a little bit about what you do and, you know, like you've got a passion for working with people with mental health, obviously. Yeah, so I started out working as a health coach, helping women um, with nutrition, emotional eating and all of that. But really, um, my own journey was, uh, and I started that around the time I had um, my twin boys who are now 10. Um, but my real struggle was, my personal um, struggle was uh, with um, depression and mostly depression. Um, and overwhelm, fatigue, um, adrenal fatigue, in fact. And that was in the first year of my um, having my children. Um, that's when things really got started. And it just spiraled. And um, you know, some days would be worse than others. But uh, you know, I went to my doctor, like a lot of people did. Um, and I took all, you know, I took, I tried different medications, none of which were really suiting me and none of which were getting to the root cause. Um, and, you know, the, the root cause, well, I think, you know, for a lot of mums, how it was for me was I was, um, I wanted to do things perfectly. Yeah. I wanted to. And twin boys, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God, just wanted... Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, well, anyone that's got twins, I sort of take my hat off to them. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think I, it probably started in my pregnancy, to be honest, because I actually I remember finding out I was having, I was so excited to become a mum. But when I found out I was having more than one, I, I, I really, I cried for the first, like, six months. To, I yeah. was trying to adjust to this idea. And I was like, oh, my God, I only wanted one. <laughs> yeah, oh but, but, of course, you know, now, like, I wouldn't have it any other way. But... But Absolutely. at the time, it was really hard. And then then I decided that um, I was going to, like, when it was getting closer, I was like, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I'll do it perfectly and I'll have full control and I, I won't need help from anyone. And um, we did have help. We had a maternity nurse in the first six weeks, but then she was gone. It was all done to me. And I was like, right, no, you know, I had offers of help. I can do but this. I, I refused at all, yeah, and I would just, I, um, yeah, so of course I was burnt out, I was overwhelmed, and... Um, did you have any family help? Like, did you have any family support around you? Like, We had, uh, that's when we were living in London, and I had, all my family were over here, and, but we had my, um, my husband's mother, who was very helpful, but again, like sometimes she'd come and help out, but I was still, and, you know, even my husband, when he'd offer to do things like, no, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then, um, and then I just remember one day trying to, uh, I literally couldn't get myself off the sofa to change a nappy. That's, this is like three in the afternoon. I was like, what's going on? Like, I've just, I cannot get myself off the sofa I just can't do it and that sort of hit me every day in the afternoon I was like this is not normal what is going on um and then I sort of I think I got my timeline wrong so it was after that I went to study um holistic health coaching when I just not really got the results I wanted um through conventional means of you know medication and I thought oh there's got to be something more to this and I 
that's when I started my journey of studying nutrition and um, and that's when I learned about adrenal fatigue. So, okay, so it's adrenal fatigue. And where I, of course, I completely burnt out my adrenals. I was completely, um, you know, the, the perfectionism and just, I was mm. so overwhelmed and burnt out. But I kept and going. Can you just, can because you I just didn't like, want to fail. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, what did you just say? Adrenal fatigue, sorry. Adrenal fatigue, um, yeah. Yeah, adrenal fatigue is... Um, caused mainly by stress isn't it like it's not something i mean there, there would be other things that could uh cause it you know like if mm. there's other parts of your body that's not working and you know yeah and... it's like too much um cortisol in the body and i it's, it's very common with like you know people who work in like you know um in banks like they who do really long stressful hours and mm. in the city mm. and that kind of thing but yeah, with, with mums as well. I mean, mums who, um, you know, have that, whether you're trying to be perfect or not, there's a lot of stress and, um, oh, you know. Absolutely. The, got the weight of the world on them. And they, they try to be, you know, we want to be things to, we want to be all things to all people, like mm. the, you know, the perfect wife, the, the perfect mother, and, and it's just not attainable. And, mm. um, and so I've really, you know, learned to embrace the mess, the chaos, and um, because you know we're, the perfectionism, like you know, even if we we feel like we've reached that level of perfectionism, then we'll just set a new level, and it's just it's like we keep going, going until we just you know embrace the flaws, like we, you know, and just accept the help, and yeah. just I mean, if I knew all of what I know now back then, things would have looked a lot different. Different, but different new, story, right? Yeah, and and you've got to like. Not everyone, but most most of us have to go to the depths to break, you know, through, break through, so that we can see Hit that. Rock and, bottom, and yeah, yeah, and especially, you know, I well, I I say especially women, mainly because we are women, right? However, you know, I I know that there's um, mental health issues very very strongly in men these days as well. Mm. But this whole thing about bailing. You know that that you know if we're not good enough or we're not you know that we we're not perfect we can't do mm, it mm. you know that that we've failed in some way and this whole concern about being rejected because we've failed you know yeah it's such a I, I think it all the... comes back to like whether you're a man or a woman a mum or whoever like it our just our belief systems our our root the issues that the root issues for or the root issue for all, most of us is that you know we don't feel like we're enough mm. and we keep just striving to fulfill that so we you know um feel enough but it's just until we do the inner work and realize that we are enough just as we are we don't need to you know um have all these achievements or whatever we're going after mm. like it's like the perfectionism thing like until we accept right here right now like we're just always going to be running after it burning ourselves out feeling exhausted and and you know it affects every, every area of our life like you know whether it's um mental health um relationships eating disorders like it it really is Absolutely. at the core of just you know for so many men and women it's it really comes back to i love marissa Peer's work you know she talks a lot about that and um yeah it's it's, uh... it's, it is interesting i'm i'm doing um a course myself at the moment and that's um the six sabotage beliefs that he talks about you know like um not good enough not perfect um not worthy don't belong incapable mm. and something else i can't remember what the other one is but it's, yeah. it's they're all you know but really when they all boil down it's not feeling good enough like mm, not feeling mm, like you're, you're good enough and mm. and unfortunately it's um it's just our where we're at in society and like i i watched um the secret garden the other day uh on netflix and at the very start the housekeeper comes to get this little girl you know from the orphanage or whatever um because her she's moving in with her uncle and she's late so she's standing there and you know i think it's done it you know from the 30s or the 40s or something 
and this little girl sitting there, standing there with her suitcases and the um, housekeeper's talking to the train, um, you know, the guy that's at the train station mm. and saying, you know, oh, she's she doesn't look um, very, you know, she's very plain and look at that face and da 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 and well, the little girl's standing there, you know. And I thought how much of that was reality for a lot of children, you know, don't, don't um, speak, you know, like don't speak yeah. to adults and da, 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 and all those rules and regulations. Well, they became parents and they became the mothers of the next generation. And, mm. you know, like we're, we're really the first generation or, you know, the first part of our era that's really, going, well, wait a minute, that's all not okay. And we need to sort of start pulling down these layers and mm. working out who we are underneath mm. all of that mm. past, you know, um, yeah. past pains and, and traumas, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, those five things you listed, like, you know, a, a mother feels pretty much every single one of those. And, mm. um, but I love to, um, yeah, I mean, it, like stuff happens. To mm. all of us mm. um even those who had relatively healthy childhoods you know things happen but it's the meaning we add to that you know yeah. things like really traumatic things can happen and some people might you know actually just thrive in life because they're um despite the um you know what's happened to them but because it, it's all all about the the meaning we add and i love what peter crone says he says um it happened and it couldn't happen have happened any other way because it didn't like it's just so it's like yeah it couldn't it what happened happened but it's yeah. that meaning we add to it and then we make that we we turn it into something we make it a belief and then about ourselves and then that just becomes the running thing running story in our life and mm. dictates our life our relationships so everything mm -hmm. and and then that is like the mindset is a big thing when it comes to um, mums and mental health. And um, so, how did you how did you find it? So you you went and did a you started studying holistic. Um, so I did the health coaching, and yeah. I um, I actually I went into it thinking there was something um, you know like food has a big impact on how we feel, but I thought that was like the root of it, I thought, if I can just change my diet and eat really well, I feel so much better. <laughs> so I went into it with, with also a fascination with food. And then, you know, they, they talked a lot about self-care. And when I saw that on the curriculum, I was like, oh, I don't want to know about that. Like, I want to know about all the food and the nutrition. And then I came out the other side a year later, realizing that, and also self-care and spirituality. And I came out the other side a year later, I was like, no, that's, that's what I needed was the self-care and the spirituality and connecting more with myself and um you know embracing who uh, you know who i was and and that's what i you know help other moms do is embrace who they are like you know yes we're all flawed but embrace the flaws like you know mm. it's a thing if we're all perfect it would be really boring <laughs> yeah but, yeah so there so yeah so there's um again nutrition self-care self-love spirituality um you know really when i when i talk about self-love and self-care i think one of the most important things is how we talk to ourselves like that is the most um important thing when it comes to um how we take care of ourselves because our mind is the um if we let our mind run wild and just do its own thing it will it will screw us over because mm -hmm. that will will be we'll just let that story run from you know with all our beliefs and these full beliefs in our um brain that you know creates the story and all those thoughts limiting and, beliefs yeah yeah yeah, the yeah which story. then our body takes this on like um you know we've got to change those neuro pathways we've got a mm. one of my favorite sayings is um we want to uh talk to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves so yeah. you know our um Oh, I like our, that. What's that? The back of our brain, I can't remember the name of it. The um, amygdala? Oh, something like that, yeah. yeah That's yeah. The, the one that creates all the, um, the negative thoughts. Oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm that's the one. Sure that, it's the amygdala, yeah. 
so that's one that you know that's that's mostly that um, reptilian, our primitive um, our primitive i think it might be also yeah, called the primitive, the primitive, yeah, the brain, primitive yeah. brain yeah yeah so that's like you know it comes it's all about negativity and um you know if we let that run the show then oh my god like we're on a downward spiral but it's um so we want to talk to our primitive brain with our prefrontal cortex and take control and create our own thoughts of how we want to feel yeah. and this is like an effort this isn't like a one-off thing this is every mm. single day mm. and until we... because that that part of the brain um at one stage you know was to keep us safe you know like yes. yeah yeah but, um now it's a matter of you know taking that and it's great back. if we're in front of a lion that's about to that's, attack us but that's right it doesn't yeah. serve us in everyday life no so, that's right so yeah. you know like allowing like taking control from from the front as you were say saying you know mm. like and um and having to recondition the brain and the limiting beliefs so exactly so um so you work a lot with mental health but it sounds like a lot with women um you were saying about um young mums uh being the most vulnerable in the first year yeah so oh, yeah um you know, where we, we rally around people with terminal diseases and uh, support them, but um, people with mental health, um, the mental illness are not getting the support they need because mm. of the stigma. And mm. um, yeah, it's the, the leading cause of, um, or suicide is the leading cause of death amongst um, first time moms, like in the first year, which is horrifying. So it is, um, yeah, the risks are just too high to ignore. And we've got to, break down the stigma and um yeah speak out and that's why you know i'm quite open about you know sharing my journey because i know how much it helps other people mm. and who are struggling who feel like they can't talk about it or reach out and but we must like it's you know it's not a weakness to reach out to help it's a strength and it's probably the best thing you could do for yourself and your family to um, reach out and ask for help and mm. And just get that support, get that connection, and you know, rather than just closing it's, yourself. It sort off. of, um, it sort of ties in with women and their ability. You know, how often do you hear women say, "Yeah, I'm really good at giving," but you know, find it really challenging to receive? And so, you know, it sort of ties in with that whole thing of receiving as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not being enough. Like we yeah. don't feel like we're worthy enough of receiving. Yeah love yeah. or whatever you know and it's it all it, yeah it all, it all ties in and and you know especially like uh you know i've had friends that you know not coping with little kids and you know as you get a little bit older you become the wise you know wise woman they come to or whatever and um <laughs> and i've often said you know like you know if you think of it this way if you can't look after yourself if you're not you know at your um peak or you know like mm. at least healthy um you can't look after everybody else so you know it's if you don't mm. want to think about it doing it for you do it for everyone else and think of it i need to get get on my track so that i can keep giving the way i normally do you know so exactly yeah because you know whether if we do whichever way um we're heading we're you know like our family it's either getting the best version of us or the worst version, you know, mm. and um, we've got to, yeah, start changing, um, you know, otherwise you're just on a downward spiral. But, but so many mums, like, they don't know what to do. They're like, I feel so crap. That's my yeah. thing. Like, um, that's what I, like, my slogan, helping uh, women stop feeling like crap and feeling more joy because joy is our birthright. And But here we are all feeling, you know, like crap and not knowing how to get out of it. Yeah, because um, we weren't taught the stuff at school, you know, and oh, and it's you know, and we've got so much going on. Uh, my um, I had my first my first daughter. Um, I've got a daughter and a son, and my first child had colic really badly, and so um, which is very I, stressful for a mother. Ah, uh, and like mm. I I ended up being a remedial massage therapist, but I wasn't at the time. So like I'm talking nights of, of in and out of the shower and like up all night and blah 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 sleep deprivation oh, and, was just, yeah. yeah absolutely and so when my son came along i was um had some personal 
um, stuff going on, you know, with my relationship with his, with their father and blah, blah, blah. And so um, he, we were sort of um, finding it hard to where were we going to live and all this sort of stuff going on. So my um, milk dried up and I, well, it wasn't, it wasn't dried up. It was, I still had it, but it wasn't um, giving the nutrition. And I kept on asking the midwives if, if he's getting my milk, is he getting the nutrition? And they'd say yes. Well, I found out later that he that that wasn't the case. But I I remember the day that um, he was crying and and you know carrying on because he was starving. I found out because mm. um, I was young. I was you know twenty four and or twenty five I think when I had my second child. And um, and I remember my partner looking at me and saying, "Is he hungry?" And I just like, like I was just so, how could you ask me if he's hungry? And I just looked at him and said, here, you take him. And I ran down the street screaming. I was halfway down the street before oh I realised what I was doing, you know, and I stopped and realised what I was doing, you know, and I breathed and I, you know, and I, and I walked back and I took the baby and, you know, mm. met him and, um, oh, which is, you know, but, for you to do that, but it uh, must have been. Ah, uh, like, you know, like I said, I was halfway down the street before I realised that I was running down the street screaming, oh, you know. Wow. So it's, it's just so um, challenging when you're, you feel like no one, you, you're the one that's given birth, right? So you've got mm. this cocoon mm. around you, like even energetically, you feel like no one quite understands what's going on I didn't have any other women to nurture me around me you know mm. and um which I think is very important as well to have that you know for other sure mothers. yeah but um yeah it was like you know and and so I really feel for mothers these days where a lot of women are um not you know don't have their extended family around them or first time mums and they're young and you know they don't know what they're doing and their parent their mm. partners have no idea either and yeah and then put COVID on top of all of that Imagine oh my god I did now. a post about that yesterday of just you know the burden on mums and then add a lockdown and COVID and just yeah it's, it's madness yeah. but um oh, I forgot what I was gonna say um yeah no it's gone <laughs> That, that's well, another it's, thing, it's, like memory when you know, yeah, yeah. menopause memory. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so if, so if there's anyone, you know, uh, um, and, and the other part of that too is that if it's not something like you might have brought your children up and if you didn't get some help, you could still have some stuff going on internally that you're still trying to work out, right, and you've buried it down. So... Yeah, you know, that's the other part of mental health as well is you know like just completely burying it so that you don't yeah. have to look yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, and if we don't look at it, it's going to manifest in some way until we yeah. until we deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. But the um, you know, when you leave hospital with your baby, the hospital advice is um, you know, only ever about like they they teach you how to have your baby latch onto your boob and things like that, but mm -hmm. never ever mention anything about you know postnatal support or um, you know what to do beyond you know that point for your emotions or it's all about um, yeah we need so much all the physical support things. yeah mm -hmm. like so much support when we leave hospital and we're given mm -hmm. so little mm -hmm. um, so yeah but yeah I mean you yeah painted a great picture there of how hard it can be and yeah um yeah so it is it's a bit crazy so so basically that's you um support women um in that situation but also you know you've got a little bit more that you you work with mental health in general right um yeah well like uh, mostly um mostly mums it seems to be um who I'm attracting because my story is mm. so relatable and um, but there's so many, I mean, the triggers can be different for everyone, but to feel our absolute best, I mean, we want to be, um, yeah, like the mindset is a big thing. So the mindset, um, 
the nutrition, how we feed ourselves, our gut being our second brain, like really nurturing that and making making sure that's um, you know, because our brains and our gut talk to each other. So we want to nurture um, both of those, and mm-hmm. um, and also things like you know, when I say things can trigger different people, I mean. Like gluten, for example, it's an inflammatory food. Maybe for some people, that's that's their trigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I've tried that. Like, I've pretty much eliminated everything, and um, and I, I know that food is not really my trigger. But I do maintain really good gut health. I'm actually on a gut cleanse at the moment. Um, so yeah, mindset nutrition. Um, um, mindset nutrition exercise like getting those endorphins firing um mindset is like you know a big part of my work because it's really helping someone integrate the um the practices into their life so we're trained uh, we, we're changing the the brain waves and the the pathways and and um affirmations i'm big i love of affirmations and also yeah sensuals like i know you're a big lover of sensuals and mm. when and the amazing pattern disruptors and when we pair um sensuals with affirmations like that's a that's a powerful combination it is it's beautiful yeah yeah i was and like doing just, that yesterday with a girlfriend yeah yeah it's so good i mean mm. you're working on your brain what by what you're telling yourself with your thoughts and then you're having these powerful plant essences breaking those you know those patterns that are not serving you and um so that's a powerful thing to do in, in the mornings uh, before you start the day um and then um you know like spirituality like meditation like meditation is not for everyone but you know if that is your thing like um it's a great way to connect to yourself um and what else would I say is under my little, I've got little things on my wall that, um, yeah, that I've mentioned the main things. Also supplementation, like that, like that comes under nutrition really. But, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, women have ended up in psychiatric, psychiatric units when they are just deficient in B12. Like yeah. we need B12. And yeah. it really is important for us, so important for our mental health and really support us. And if we're not getting enough of it, then we can, yeah, it can really affect us. And so, so I'm all about, you know, whole body, mind body um, mm, health. Mm. And, you know, because if we're going to our, our, our doctor, I mean, doctors are, um, are amazing. They, they, you know, they're very compassionate, but their toolbox sucks. And yes. they've got very little Isn't that to true? offer. Yeah. Yeah. They've got, yeah. you know. So yeah. that didn't serve me, and maybe it served some people. Um, and but yeah, I really am passionate about helping people when they've been down that pathway and not got the results they want. Yeah, and you know, like we've we've just spoken a bit about a little bit about what my journey's been, and um, you know, I do believe doctors have got a place. Uh, it's just mm-hmm. that as that's a great way of putting it. Their their tool belt is quite limited, and if we yeah. can work on ourselves first, um, do everything we can, and then you know like go okay, we need to you know go down that path or whatever. You know, you got a broken arm, you go to a doctor, right? So, um, mm. but um, they don't really have that much knowledge about nutrition. They've studied you know um, pharmaceuticals to the T. Um, mm. But, um, you know, you can do so much before that with your mindset and your nutrition and, and your spiritual side um, mm. before, you know, you, you would have to go down the route of, of medication. And sometimes people do need to go down that route, you know. Yeah. But, but um, to try the other things first and, and I mean, for some people, to heal it, itself. Yeah. For some people, it's so bad that they really just need something to take that edge off. But mm. I mean, when you're looking at it long term, I mean, the um, the medications can really um, it makes it harder coming off it mm. the longer you're on it because mm. it really mm. um, does something to our brain. A lot of yeah. scientists I can't explain it, but I've experienced it mm. and how hard that you know it can be coming off it if we're so dependent on them. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think what's more empowering is taking full control of, um, you know, what we can and 
and seeing how that goes for us and then we can resort to um other things like that but yeah, yeah everyone's on a different journey and i i think um but the but the but the recipe recipe should we say is pretty much the same for everyone yeah um yeah but you like you know people need to heal and and get some someone to talk to and absolutely so do you yeah. have um uh anything that that people can access how can people get in contact with you bridget uh so i'm on instagram just bridget brocklebank um i'm on uh facebook this wholesome life um and i've got a facebook group uh called the joy club um oh, which uh we're, we're still quite small but we're growing and i try to pop in there every day i'm just um yeah i'm obviously a mum and doing a million things and uh, but I do try and get in there daily and um support people and um and it, but it's gonna be uh, more of a thing soon I'm gonna dedicate more time to it and it's gonna be um yeah I just like to have a really good vibe in there mm. and support people um with where they're at and um yeah so sounds fantastic so mm. you'd be able to put the links to that in the um underneath the thread sure. once. yeah 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 awesome so Excellent. with the, in your facebook group yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Put, yep, yeah that'd be fantastic cool okay everyone thank you so much for listening and thank you bridget for your time thank you um, for having me yeah we've pre-recorded this because we're both um you know like busy mums you've got to do it whenever whenever <laughs> we've got the chance so um yeah once we put this up we can then um put that into the thread afterwards so That'd be awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care. See you.